Hello everyone, welcome to Akinit. At least I'm hope I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's a Swedish word, so if I'm pronouncing it wrong, please correct me. I would describe this game in my own words, but as is usual, the official description is better, so I'm simply going to read it. Akinit is a point-and-click adventure game where the player takes the role of a small, seemingly insignificant creature, leading it through a dark world riddled with obstacles to help it find a place to belong. The game takes place in a Norse medieval world and contains a number of beings and areas inspired by Swedish folklore. This game is available from many different places. I will have links to all of that in the description. So I heard about this game a while ago. I read a review about it, and I was really intrigued, especially because of the art style. And since then, I just... I forgot about it. I just totally forgot about it. It's one of those games that I just forgot to bookmark. But thankfully, it popped up on my radar again, and now I am here. But in the review, I did read some stuff that... You know, I wasn't quite sure if I'd like the game. It was a little bit worrying. It sounded like it was a pretty good game, but it had some problems with the puzzle design. Which is unfortunately pretty common for adventure games. However, the good thing is, the game actually comes with a walkthrough. Which is very nice. So I have that handy, and I'm going to use it if I if I feel like I need it. Of course, I'm going to give the game a fair shake. I'm going to try to solve the puzzles on my own. But if it gets to the point where I'm just getting really frustrated, I'm just going to use a walkthrough. So... As always, I like to take my time with the games that I play. I like to slow down and really absorb everything, and I like to think about the games I play and analyze them a bit, so I will be doing that throughout, especially towards the end. And I do want to talk about the art style, but it's best to talk about that while actually in-game. So, let's start. New game. Hello, fellow traveler. Did you lose the trail? Come, have a seat by the fire. This is no night to be wandering these woods alone. You see, this is a special night, one rarely seen. Let me tell you a story to make the hours pass. One not many know of, and even fewer believe to be real. What do you see in this piece of stone? Yes, it is small, not much to look at, and to most, not of any particular use. Yet it is not of irrelevance to the story that I am about to share with you. You see, every 100 years or so, a strange event occurred. As the days grow short and the nights long, a night darker than others ensues. It is said that when the moon leaves the sky, as darkness envelops the land and the stars awaken, you can hear the sounds of being rarely seen. And if one lingers in the dark shadows waiting for sight to return, things that any other night would seem to be one thing appear to be another. It was during a night like this that a small, in the scope of the world, insignificant creature with no name was born. What is this place? The insignificant creature without a name wondered as it emerged from the ground and began to explore the dark world. And here I am. I have emerged to explore the dark world. I'm a creature without a name, apparently. Insignificant. At least, that's how I'm described. Although somebody, something tells me that throughout the rest of this journey, it's not going to end up that way. So yes, I wanted to talk about the art style, and as you can see, it is a very dark game. Literally speaking, I, I believe the tone of it is also probably pretty dark, but just literally speaking, it's also very, very dark. It's almost as if the art style of the game is... I... I mean, I guess a lot of it comes down to the lighting. It's almost as if the entire game takes place at... at night with a clear sky and a full moon. It looks kind of... like what it would look like if your eyes had adjusted to a full moon. Where everything's very gray. And there's not a lot of contrast. But it's really interesting. And the little bits of... Of, uh... 
of Swedish folklore. And just the strangeness, like, look at, look at me, look at what I am, what am I? I'm this very strange creature. I'm kind of adorable and also kind of a little bit scary. Mostly adorable, though. Yeah, mostly adorable. It looks like I'm shuffling about. I, I barely even have feet. It's just really cool. Really interesting looking. So I think that's what attracted me to it the most. It's just that. The, the strangeness of it. The strangeness of how it looked. Alright, so let's take a look around. And what is this thing? There might be someone around who can explain where I am. Okay. And by the way, this is actually with the gamma turned up. Wait, what the... Did you... Wait, did you reset? Okay, maybe that's not what the gamma turned up. I thought I had it at 75%. Let's put it back there. Okay, this is what the gamma turned up. As you can see, the difference between all the way dark and all the way up is not all that much. It's just a very dark game. I'm not sure whether that's going to be problematic or not. We'll see. It could certainly lead to a situation where I'm not able to really tell what I can even interact with because I can't even see it. But we'll see what happens. Let's take a look around. Let's look at this spring. So I can... See, I believe I can do three different actions. You can lure, which has the narrator uh, talk about it. I can attempt to use it, and I can attempt to converse with it. So tell me about this spring. There was a small spring in the clearing, reflecting the night sky. In the middle of the spring, you could see the reflection of a large star. Something about this star seemed different from the others around it. The narrator really is exceptional, isn't he? His voice is just perfect for this. Can I converse with the, with the spring? Hello? What a beautiful place! The small, insignificant creature thought to itself, admiring the reflected glow of the stars. It is beautiful, in a very creepy and kind of melancholy way. Let's try to touch it. The creature tried to collect some of the cold water, but was unable to keep the elusive liquid in its hands. It really is such a cute little creature, isn't it? It's so... Uh, it looks so fluffy. I just want to pet it. Let's look at the sky. The sky had a strange feeling to it that night. Almost as if the stars themselves had come to life, trying their hardest to make up for the absence of the moon's glow. The absence of the moon's glow? Is, is there no... moon? Them. The small creature thought while gazing up into the sky. I wonder how such small things can shine so brightly. Either there is no moon, and given the strange world that wouldn't surprise me, or maybe it's just not full yet. However, if it's not full, I would say the world is surprisingly bright, but then again, my eyes look huge. So maybe my, I'm a creature, a creature of the darkness, a creature with very big eyes. Adapted to it. Mount of Stones. Looks like a... a grave. In the middle of the clearing, there was a mound of stones that seemed to have concealed something. Stuck between the stones were two branches tied together to form a cross. Seems like a grave. The stones were too heavy for the small creature to move. What was I doing below those stones? The creature wondered, standing next to the hole it just crawled out of. Well, if that's a grave, and I just came out from under it, perhaps I've been resurrected? Am I an undead creature? No matter how hard it tried, the small creature couldn't reach any of the stars. Aww. That's so... I don't know if that's funny or sad, I'm just imagining this creature reaching up with its most likely very, very small and short hands, trying to grab at the stars. 
A bowl. On the ground, there was a wooden bowl filled with what used to be flowers of vibrant colors, most likely gathered and forgotten long ago. Used to be vibrant. Yeah, I don't think anything's vibrant anymore. Everything's gray and black. The small creature looked at the old forgotten plants. I wonder if they ever got the chance to be appreciated for their beauty. The small creature carefully picked up the bowl along with the dried flowers. I think I can open up the inventory with the right mouse button. Yeah, I can. Alright, I suppose I could get some water. Hmm. No. No, that's not how it happened. <laughs> okay, so yeah. The narrator is a, a narrator telling, I guess, a, well, a tale. And what is supposed to happen is already predetermined, of course. There's also these things down here, these runes, I believe they are. Actually, it mentions in... Yeah, here. Is it here? Right here. Yeah, there are four rune stones which have various effects on the environment around you. The effect differs depending on which location you are currently at, and each rune is tied to a specific element. Exactly how they work, though, I don't know. This one looks like... water. As the small creature explored its surroundings, tiny drops of rain began to fall from the dark sky. I really don't need it to be any drearier than it was before. Let's turn that off. Okay, I wonder how these are going to work for solving puzzles, because there could be a lot of combos here. Alright, what is this one? It's a green. That made a little a bunch of rocks appear. Hmm, I can't use it now. Is this fire? Is that... It's making something go across the... Uh, something get reflected in the spring. Is that a shooting star? And what is this? It makes a dragonfly come out? What's the actual element, though? I guess, what, water, fire, earth, and... And what? What is this? Hmm. Does that say Alv Stone? A-L-V? What does that mean? Well, let's go. To the to the elf stone, whatever that means. A mysterious boulder is standing in one of the clearings. Large circle of mushrooms. It is believed that circles of mushrooms spring up when Alv appear to join one another in dance. If an unlucky man or woman should join them in their dance, they would find that time passes faster within the Alv circle, and years may go by while they are engrossed in a few moments of joyful dance. That sounds kind of disturbing, actually. Is a small circle. Well, there's a large circle and a stone, and a small circle with no stone. At the edge of the woods, there was another circle of mushrooms, seemingly too small to dance in. Some believe that certain alve circles hold the power to transport alvor and people alike across vast distances. People. It could be some sort of a portal. <laughs> 
Can I push it? Something tells me I don't have the strength. It's a little bit bigger than me. Reaching into the hole, the small creature felt something flat, round, and hard. As it removed the object from the hole, it saw that it was an old coin. Hmm. A coin, some dried flowers, and a bowl. The hole was now empty. Is there really someone strong enough to move a stone like this? The creature looked at the large stone, its eyes filled with fear and admiration alike. It is impressively sized, isn't it? Especially compared to the size of the creature, I mean, he would have to look up at it. It would tower over him. Alright, let's try the elements. Let's see what happens. Hmm. What this? It made the mushrooms, like, pulsate. What if I go near the small circle? No, it doesn't do anything. What about this? Oh. Okay, that did something. What about this? Suddenly, as the small creature stood silently next to the large stone, beautiful glowing beings joined in dance appeared out of the darkness. The creature beheld them in awe before they, just as quickly as they appeared, vanished into thin air seemingly unaware of the small creature who so longed to reach out to them. Were those fairies? They looked kind of like fairies. What a beautiful and strange world this is. I wonder if I could combine these things. What if I made it rain and then did this? No. Suddenly. Let's go to the tool shed, apparently. Burnt out fireplace and some firewood. Well, I can imagine what I need to do. Or at least want to do. As the small creature moved closer to the fireplace, it could feel a faint warmth emanating from the coals. Actually, hold on a second. I just realized I don't think I tried everything here. Did I try to pick these up? The small mushrooms? Did I even try to pick up the large mushrooms? The small creature thought about taking one of the mushrooms, but they didn't look all that tasty. No, they don't. I wonder why this one is so small. Could it be that Alvo vary in size? The creature wondered, while trying to imagine a small gathering inside of the ring. Hmm. Could I make them appear here? Sudden. Maybe if I could put a stone in the center. Maybe. The small creature thought about Dick. I wonder why this one is larger than the other one. The small creature said to itself while pondering the reason for its size. What a nice feeling. The creature thought to itself as it curled up beside the fireplace, trying to warm its small body next to the coals. Even though the fire had been put out, 
The coals seem too hot to touch. There does seem to be quite a bit of warmth left. We should be able to get a fire going. The moist firewood was of no use to the small creature. Ah, it's all been rained on. Next to the shed lay a pile of moist old firewood. It's too bad the farmer didn't move the wood inside after working so hard to cut it. The small creature thought as it looked at the pile of unusable firewood. Yeah, what a waste. But, I wonder if I can use one of the elements to dry it out. What about this one? The warmth emanating from the coals had almost faded when something seemed to reignite them. The small creature watched the coals for a while, spellbound by their calming glow. Oh, I actually don't need to. I could just do that. The warmth. I'm not sure why the voice is coming from almost entirely from the left channel of the audio. Very strange. I guess I could put it out entirely if I did this. Let's see what this does. Whoa. What the? Hello? Hi. What if I stand on you when I do it? I guess nothing. <laughs> Strange. Alright, so in the other one it did... In the first place it did... A, uh, a dragonfly. Now it's doing just like a leaf. Falling in some random spot. I guess it's just nature in general is what this is, this element is. Nature, but life. Tool rack. The top part of the shaft had been broken and was barely attached to the rest of the tool. Now unusable for working the fields. As the small creature touched it, the top part of the shaft easily came off. I wonder where I'm putting this stuff. I guess I have a lot of room under my fur or feathers? Are those feathers? I can't even tell. They kind of look like feathers. These tools seem to have been used for a long time, the small creature thought. The farmer must have to work hard. Cartwheels. A pair of wooden cartwheels had been partially buried in mud over the years. The cartwheels were buried too deep for a small creature to pull them out of the ground. I wonder if I could even use them for anything if I had them. I wonder why they were left here. Didn't the farmer need them anymore? The small creature thought to itself. Yeah, everything kind of looks broken. I mean, buried cartwheels and broken tools, wet wood. Looks like that one goes to the field. Maybe I'll find the farmer. Oh, I can't go inside of this hole? But it looks so inviting. A, a deep, dark hole that could have anything inside of it. Okay, maybe I don't want to go into it. There was an old piece of cloth lying on the ground, seemingly being used as a doormat. I guess something probably lives in there. It looks like someone has been wiping their feet on it. The small creature stated. Ooh, hi. Hey. An angry voice emanated from the shed as the creature was about to pick up the piece of cloth laying on the ground. I found that. If you want it, you'll just have to bring me something else that I can use. Okay then, don't mean to bother you. I can't even possibly read that name. You're kinda terrifying looking and you appear to be a floating head. 
Um, something you can use as a doormat. Would you like some dried flowers? Hmm. No. No, that's not how it happened. No, I didn't think so. Okay. Um. An old guard stomp appeared to have made the shed his home. A guard stomp is a being that tends to the farmer's land and tools, watching over the daily activities on the farm to make sure that nothing bad befalls it or its inhabitants. What a very strange being. It looks kind of terrifying, but apparently it's very helpful. The guard stomped was staying inside of the shed, out of the creature's reach. Hello? The small creature said politely. Who are you? The guard stomped looked at the creature. I'm the one who looks after this place. No simple task, mind you. The master of the farm hasn't been tending to the land enough this season, so I have to make up for his stupidity by working myself to the bone. The guard stumped muttered in a stern, yet slightly proud voice. You're a small one, aren't you? I haven't seen something like you before. Where did you come from? The small creature looked at the guard stumped. I'm not sure. I remember waking up beneath a stone mound, and as I crawled out, the first thing I saw was the stars. Do you know why I'm here? The small creature asked hopefully. I see. Beneath the old stone mound. The guard stomped appeared to remember something, becoming quiet for a moment before continuing. No, I'm afraid I don't know why you were born into this place, little one. Nor do I think there is truly a place for you here at the farm. You should look for a place of your own elsewhere. The small creature hung its head for a moment after hearing the guard stomp's response. Don't fret, little one. You'll find your place in this world, I'm sure of it. This farm has simply never been that place. This whole story really does feel like some sort of a a folk tale or something like something like that, doesn't it? These all these strange creatures, these strange beings. But at the same time, my main uh, quest, if you will, if you could call it that, is to just find out what I'm supposed to do with my life. Like I don't even know what I'm what I'm doing. I, I need to find my... my purpose. Discovering yourself, basically. Except told through the lens of a very strange world with very strange creatures. I really like it. Would you like some rain, Guard Stomped? He doesn't care. Okay, I'm gonna leave now. Goodbye. To the fields. Maybe I'll find the farmer? That's not the farmer. That's a scarecrow. Although, for all I know, maybe it's going to come to life. <laughs> I wonder what the crows look like in this world. Hmm. There's an inviting little tunnel there. The field looked to have been sown quite a while ago, yet nothing had begun to grow. Do you need some water, perhaps? I can make that happen. The farmers must have worked hard to make this field. The small creature thought to itself. I wish their crops would start growing. Let's see if I can help it along. Didn't work. What does this do? Oh! Never mind, it did work. As the small creature walked across the field, stalks began to sprout from the wet soil. I wonder what these are, though. 
The rain had caused a couple of the seeds sown by the farmer to grow rapidly, an occurrence you would only be able to see during a night like this one. The small creature managed to pick up a handful of oats off the stalks. Oats, okay. I wonder if I grew that fast when I was born, the small creature pondered. Probably not. Although it certainly wouldn't be a little... It wouldn't be too crazy for a world like this. Alright, so I've got oat seeds, a broken shaft, an iron coin, some dried flowers, and a bowl. No idea what to do with these yet. I suppose at some point I could maybe grind up the oat seeds. Hmm. No. No. That's not how it happened. I guess not. The sky had a strange feeling to it that night. Almost as if the stars themselves had come to life, trying their hardest to make up for the absence of the moon's glow. Well, as much as their valiant effort is appreciated, it's not quite enough to make the world very bright. Whoa, what the? Being put so close to this creepy thing's head is kind of, kind of freaking me out. G get away. <laughs> okay, apparently I can zoom in on it. I guess I'm going to be doing something with it piece of cloth. I could maybe use that to be a replacement doormat for the guard stomped. A dirty piece of cloth had been sewn into the scarecrow's head, covering a tear in the burlap. Hmm, Alright, so I can't use any of my runes. I'd have to use an item on it. Or maybe I could just rip it off. The small creature tried to remove the piece of cloth, but was unable to. Nope. That looks painful, having something sewn onto your head like that. The small creature thought to itself. I wonder if I could help in some way. In the middle of the field, there stood a rugged scarecrow, seemingly looking up into the starlit sky. It is looking up, isn't it? I wonder what it's thinking about. Is it thinking about crows? Or is it thinking about the meaning of life? As it s sits here, immobile, in a dark field. In the rain. Well, this is kind of depressing. Touching the scarecrow, the creature could feel the dry hay prickling it through the burlap. Hello? The small creature uttered nervously, but the scarecrow remained silent. But can it not speak? Or is it simply unable to? I don't really have anything sharp. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to cut off the piece of cloth, maybe, and replace it with something else, or what? I could try the shaft. Hmm. No. No. No, I don't think I have what I need. In the distance, you could barely make out an old windmill used to mill the grain harvested from the fields. Well, it looks like there's someone actually here because I see... I see smoke coming out of the chimney. The small creature watched the dark shape of the windmill. What a tall building! It thought. What wonderful things would one be able to see from up there? The windmill was too far away for the small creature to touch it. On a hill beside the field, there was an old house, which looked to have been the home of many generations of people tending the land. The small creature quietly watched the house. I wonder what it's like to have a place to call home. 
I very much would like to know what it feels like. Such a lonely creature. I mean, look at what I am. I'm, I'm this strange creature with strange eyes and I move very slowly. I'm just like this... this small, sort of mousy creature moving amongst the dark. Conversing with strange beings and searching for a meaning to my life. I feel so bad for the little guy. I feel so... such a miserable existence at the moment. Below the, the boards. The small creature was reluctant to crawl into the pitch black hole. Hmm. So I need a light source, right? I don't exactly have one. What about the... Oh! Never mind. I guess I did it. I turned on a light or something. Hopefully I didn't catch the place on fire. <laughs> Look at it wriggle around. Oh. Alright, I'm beneath the floorboards. There's a lot of room beneath the floorboards. Look at this. It's like an entire lower floor. Rays of light found their way down between the boards, revealing a room filled with old objects, long since covered in dust. So wait, long since covered in dust, does that mean there's no one here? Because I saw smoke coming from the chimney, which suggests there is someone here. Actually, I think I see something alive right here. I think I see a foot on the left side of the screen. Let's look at that in a minute. I wonder what it's like up there. The small creature thought, mesmerized by the bright light. The small creature watched as elusive particles of dust effortlessly evaded its attempts to grab them. Ooh, a needle. That's got to be used for something to do with the scarecrow. Kettle. There was an old kettle covered in dirt laying on the ground. This looks useful. The small creature said to itself. I wonder if I could take it. The small creature tried to brush some of the dirt off as it picked up the old kettle. Is that a... Is that a mouse back there? I swear I see something back there. Eyes glowing. But it's not moving. Hmm. Broken crate. One of the crates looked to have been broken long ago, now containing only a few forgotten objects. Anything I could use? In the remains of the old crate, the small creature found a ball of yarn. Well, I'm starting to get an idea as to what to do. Yarn and a needle. Maybe I could find something of use in it. The small creature thought its eyes glistening with anticipation. Yep, there's something over there. Hello! A sewing needle had been stuck into an old rug, slightly reflecting the light coming from the ceiling. I should be careful not to touch the pointy end, the small creature stated. The small creature picked up the sewing needle with care, making sure not to hurt itself. Should I say hello to the... Uh... Hustumton? Or something like that? Hold on, is there anything else here first? 
No, I think that's it. Hello. I see I'm not the only one down here. Have you been... eating? Looks like you have a gigantic spoon. In the far corner of the dark room sat an old hustumpt, stroking his long grey beard. These household deities guard the farmers' homes, keeping any unpleasant beings at bay while watching over the daily chores involved in running the household. A household deity? Or deity? That is so strange, it's like there's a... a, a a god or a creature for everything. Even something so small as just guarding a farm or guarding a home. As the creature approached the corner of the room, a grumpy voice emanated from the darkness. Who are you to enter my home when invited? If you came to steal, know that a meager creature like you would be no match for me. In the dark corner sat an old hustumpt, staring at the creature. Please forgive me. The small creature responded anxiously. I didn't mean to disturb you. I was simply curious about this place. I'm lost, you see. The hustumpt looked at the creature for quite a while before breaking the silence. Well, you certainly don't look capable enough to be the thieving kind, he muttered to himself. But if I find that you conspired with him to steal my hat, you will be sorry you revealed yourself to me. The hustumpt became quiet for a while, seemingly calming down. Although perhaps I could be persuaded to part with a couple of my belongings in return for something to calm my hunger. After all, most of these items have been gathering dust down here for as long as I can remember. But don't bring me anything fancy. I don't like brown nosing. Anything that will take care of my growling stomach will do. Alright, I can do that. Just so happens I have some oat seeds. Maybe I can make you some oatmeal or something? That, or you can eat some dried flowers, but something tells me you wouldn't like that. The hungry being dwelling below the boards believes someone is stealing his belongings. Yes, that too, he said. If you conspired with him to steal my hat. So apparently his hat is gone, and there's a him that has been doing it, whoever that is. Hmm. And I can't just, like, give him the oats, can I? Hmm. No. They need to be prepared somehow. But I can't put them in the bowl. I already tried that. Oh, uh, what if I... Do I need to process them somehow? Alright, so far I've been unable to combine anything in my inventory. Let me try the needle and yarn. Okay, there we go. Some progress. Hmm. Yeah, I can't do that. Nope. Hmm. Oops. Alright, let's keep... Oh, actually, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I forgot about these. Can't forget about my runes. What do these do? Oh, you are alive! Hello. I can't make it rain inside? I guess not. Hmm. Whoa. Alright, let's see if I can use the needle and yarn on the scarecrow. I think I need some I think I need the doormat though to use on it. Let me try both. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I need some cloth.
Okay. Is there something I could do here? I don't really know. Let me get a description for this again. A large stone could often be found at the center of Alf circles. How they got there, no one seemed to know. In some of the stones, there were holes, said to be surrounded by strange symbols. These holes could be used to summon and gain boons from Alvor by presenting them with a gift. On the other hand, if the offering was not to their liking, the boon would instead turn into misfortune. Hmm. What could I summon, and what would they not like? Uh... Well, the coin was already inside of it. Hmm. Can, can, can you summon food? Hmm. No. <laughs> uh, flowers. Hmm. No, okay. Let's go this way. Field. Wait, is that back to the field? Oh, there's just multiple ways to go. In that case, what the heck am I supposed to do? I'm already lost. <laughs> okay. I suppose, actually, let's, someone's stealing his belongings. So let's go have a chat. But the guard stomped, or guard, guard stumpton? How do you pronounce your name? The guard stomp let out a heavy sigh. I've done my best to keep this farm running. So far, I've managed to make up for the farmer's neglect of his tasks, but the old worn-out tools make work in the field slow. Would you like me to fix your tools? I don't think I can. The guard stomped was... Hmm. I can't take it. Hey. An angry voice emanated from the shed as the creature was about to pick up the piece of cloth laying on the ground. Bring me something else that I can use. I have nothing. Fasten you another one. Hmm. No. So far I've been able to combine basically nothing with anything. There's so much I need to do, and there's so few scenes with which to do it in. So what am I missing? Where's the mysterious boulders? The man in the, sh in the shed is having a hard time taking care of the fields. Yeah, what can I do about that, though? I mean, I have a, I mean, I have a broken shaft, but I can't... Repair it, can I? I've already grown something in the field. So what could I do? tools were too heavy for the small creature to carry. How could I help the guard stomped? A leaf doesn't help. The rain made it... Ooh, let me turn the rain off. The warmth emanating from... That also doesn't help. I could put the kettle on it and heat something up, but I don't have anything to heat up. I suppose I could... Hmm. Actually, hold on. Maybe I can get water in the kettle. The small creature filled the kettle to the brim with cold water. 
success, I actually managed to use something in the environment. Then I could put it on the coals and heat it up, but what do I actually heat up, though? I could put the oats in it, maybe the flour make tea? If I don't know if those are, like, flavorful flowers or what. Uh, could I put the oats in? Mm. No. Mm. No, maybe I need to put it on, put it on the fire first. The small creature hung the water-filled kettle above the fireplace. Excellent. It's a good start. Mm. No. Alright, what do I put in it? This must be used for making the food, I would think. Nothing I have is even remotely food-like, though, so I think I'm missing what I need. Well, let me try boiling it. A kettle with hot water. Water inside the kettle had been heated by the warmth emanating from the coals. The small creature carefully removed the hot kettle from the fireplace. Okay, maybe now I can put stuff in it. Hmm. Hmm. What, what am I supposed to do with this? Boil the coin! Hmm. What do I do with hot water? Pour it into the bowl? Okay, I have a bowl of hot water. What do I do with that? Put the oats? Hmm. I gotta boil something. Hmm. I have a bowl of hot water. A bowl of hot water. It's gotta be used to make food. Do I need to process the oat somehow? Hmm. Can I mash it? I have nothing to mash it with. Hmm. I wonder if I'm missing something from the environment. Perhaps the bowl of hot water can be an offering to the stone? Hmm. No. Could I make a mushroom stew? The small creature thought about... No, they don't look tasty. Right, so I obviously need to make food in this bowl of hot water somehow. Which will allow me to get items. I need to be able to get the broken, uh, the piece of cloth from the guard stomped to repair the scarecrow, but to do that I need to help them, help it tend the fields somehow. But how? This one is so small. Suddenly, as the small creature... What would I do with this thing? Like, none of these are valid offerings, right? Hmm. That already came from there. Hmm. That makes no sense.
The guard stomped let out a heavy sigh. I've done my best to keep this farm running. So far, I've managed to make up for the farmer's neglect of his tasks, but the old worn-out tools make work in the field slow. Right, need new tools, which maybe I can get by feeding the creature under the floorboards. To do that, I need to make food. I don't know how to make food. Unless I can just give it a bowl of hot water, would it be would it be happy with that? Maybe it has very low standards. Hmm. No, I didn't think so. Okay, well I'm gonna work on this puzzle for a little bit, and when I find something out, I will be right back. Aha! So I went around for a little bit trying to find the solution, was unable to find it, and resorted to the walkthrough, and I'm glad I did. Because guess what? The answer to what I needed to do is somewhere on the ground in this scene. Can you spot it? Of course you can't, because it's pr practically the same color as the background. It's a grinding stone. And it's right th there. Yes, the gray thing on the gray ground behind the black tree is the grinding stone. I, I definitely should use the walkthrough because not being able to solve a puzzle simply because you missed something on the ground is... it's kind of frustrating. On the ground there was an old grinding stone partially buried in the dirt. It looked to have been left there a long time ago. I just wish there was a hotspot indicator but there doesn't seem to be. I wonder why someone would leave this here, although it does look a bit heavy. The small creature thought to itself. The small creature barely managed to pick up the heavy grinding stone. You can do it! I believe in you! Okay, so I probably need to grind the oat seeds, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. Oats. And put that in here. And we have oatmeal. Excellent. You sure didn't hurry now, did you? The Hustumped muttered. Were you planning on letting me wait all night after I let you take my belongings? The small creature looked meekly at the floor. Well, no matter. This will stave off the hunger. The Hustumped brought a spoon out from under his thick beard and began to eat. Since you've already helped yourself to some of my objects, I hardly think a reward should be necessary. The small creature hung its head as the hustumped put another spoonful into his mouth. Fine. Here. I borrowed this from the wretched one. I have no use for it, so you might as well take it. Now go away. As the hustumped filled the spoon once more, a long strand of thick silver hair came off and landed on the ground in front of the small creature, who saw no harm in picking it up. Well, that'll come in handy for something I don't know what yet. Enjoy your unflavored oatmeal with no sugar or salt or anything. Ew, can you imagine how bad that'd be? Water and oats with nothing to flavor it? Ugh. I mean, it's calories. It would keep you alive, it would fill you, but it would not taste good. That would be the blandest of bland. A whetstone. Okay, so I could sharpen a blade. A silver hair, what do I do with that? What do I do with that? Uh, what could I sharpen? I wonder if the silver hair could be an offering to the Alvestone. It does look pretty magical. Hmm. Nope. Hmm. Okay, at some point I'm going to shove something into this hole. 
I don't know what and I don't know when, but it's going to happen. Uh, sharpen a stick? Hmm. I don't think it works that way. Right, well, the guard stomp's tools are worn out, but... Can I use it on the tools? Can I give it to him? Is that what I think it is? The guard stomped exclaimed as the small creature approached him. Is that my whetstone? Where did you find it? I don't even remember the last time I saw it. The guard stomped let out a sigh of relief. Thank you for finding it for me, little one. My old worn down tools have been the only thing standing in the way of me bringing this farm back on its feet. The guard stomped rummaged around inside the shed. I'm afraid I can't find much of a reward for you. This old hammer shaft is of good quality, but I seem to have misplaced the metal head. I can't understand how I managed to lose these things. The guard stomp scratched his forehead as he handed the hammer shaft to the small creature. Perhaps you can find a use for it, little one. I'm sorry I can't offer you a better reward. It's okay, I understand. Right, a hammer shaft. And a broken shaft and a silver hair. What am I going to be doing with this stuff? Hmm. Can the elf zone maybe be merciful and summon me a hammerhead? Hmm. No. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know what to do with it. 